Vegetable Police is another YouTuber who's kind of known for his diet shenanigans. One day he follows one diet, another day he follows a different diet. He has had stomach issues, gut problems in the past, and by not sticking to a diet, uh, this could be further exacerbating the issue. At one point he was vegan, now he's saying he was carnivore for a period of time. We haven't really seen the foods he's been eating, and he hasn't actually shown us him eating meat, where when he used to do vegan videos, he used to show the food he was eating all the time. So to say that he was following a carnivore diet, or really any diet at any point in time, is just pure speculation. He has created a negative affiliation of his recent blood work changes with the carnivore diet, but hasn't really been following a carnivore diet, and even if he was, he isn't doing it in a manner that would be conducive to fixing his health issues. Uh, so let's go over his blood work today, uh, talk about why you should or shouldn't be concerned about certain numbers, and keep in mind, almost all of his blood work was in the reference range. He was almost fear-mongering and appealing to modern authority. These reference ranges are based on a population following a heavily grain-based diet. The other thing to consider is like the recommended dietary allowances. They say we need to get a certain amount of nutrients every day, but we know some of those are correct. There's literally a study saying they made a statistical error when coming up with the vitamin D3 RDA, and it was supposed to be 9,000 IU, international units, instead of 400 IU. That's a 20-fold error. So, you know, people aren't perfect. Scientists haven't necessarily created proper blood work measurements or uh, recommended dietary allowance guidelines that are actually optimal for where we need to be. His creatinine levels were above average in the reference range, but this is very typical of anyone on a ketogenic or carnivore diet as they're consuming more protein. Extra creatinine is a byproduct of creatine and meat contains creatine. So it would only make sense that consuming more meat would raise your creatinine levels. This isn't an indicator of kidney function, it's just an indicator that your body is excreting more of a waste product. And you're not going to usually see lower levels of creatinine on this type of diet, but if he was consuming, you know, 20% protein, 80% fat like he should have, then his creatinine levels would have arguably been much lower. Most people consume too much protein when they start a carnivore diet. This is probably what he was doing. So, as I said, if he was doing the diet in a proper way with the right macronutrient ratio of fat to protein, his creatinine levels would have likely been drastically lower. His vitamin B12 was slightly above sufficient, almost actually in a deficient state. And you would think following a carnivore diet, you know, would get you high B12. But blood level of B12 is not an indicator of tissue B12. And even when you are on a heavily meat-based diet, muscle meat doesn't really have a large enough amount of vitamin B12 uh, to fix a deficiency, especially if you're having gut issues. Uh, the other factor your body needs is specific vitamins and minerals outside of the B vitamins to metabolize B12. You know, you need vitamin A, you need a lot of other fat-soluble vitamins to absorb B12 properly. Uh, liver is an example of a food that is not only way higher in vitamin B12, you know, liver has dozens and dozens of the amount of B12 that muscle meat does. It also has those other nutrients you need to metabolize and absorb vitamin B12. Uh, oysters are great too. Oysters have much more B12 than muscle meat. And when you have, you know, stomach problems, you have leaky gut, you have SIBO, candida, gut microbiome, dysbiosis, bacterial imbalances, your body's not absorbing nutrients properly. So, you're not going to be able to fix a deficiency because what you're eating is not getting absorbed. Makes sense. Moving on to the thyroid hormone TSH, it was in the normal range. And he's really nitpicking the numbers here. He's saying, oh, well, it's not perfectly in the middle of the reference range. Yeah, that's why there's a reference range. 
and your thyroid hormone is greatly regulated by iodine. So if you're not consuming a large amount of seafood or supplementing iodine, don't expect your levels to be where you want them to be. When I reached out to Vegetable Police uh, in the beginning of May, iodine was one of the things I mentioned and suggested that he start incorporating. The next blood marker is hemoglobin A1c. Hemoglobin is an iron-containing molecule that carries oxygen in red blood cells. Hemoglobin A1c is a form of the molecule that binds to glucose. So they commonly use this to measure diabetes, uh, try to see if people are pre-diabetic. But new research is coming out and has an understanding that this is not really a reliable way to test for the disease as there it can be a fairly big variance uh, depending on your ethnicity uh, how effective this is. Uh, Vegetable Police is worried that his is slightly high in the reference range. You know, as we spoke about earlier, a lot of the numbers that he has are actually in the reference range, but he's still worried about them. This test can also vary if you're messing around with your diet, especially as much as he is. I wouldn't be surprised if this number changed, you know, upwards of 30, 40, 50 percent over the course of a week or two, if he was switching between plant-based and meat-based diets. It's also impacted greatly by exercise. Uh, before you worry about any blood markers, you should really be getting several blood tests over the course of maybe even a year. You can't just get a blood test and then use that as concrete evidence. You know, if you were fasting for a day instead of two days or three days fasting, your blood can vary so much depending on what you're eating, how much you're exercising, how much sleep you're getting. It's never really a good indicator without multiple variables. The next test is C-reactive protein. This is a marker for inflammation, and his was incredibly high, more than eight times what it's supposed to be. Uh, this is common in people with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and their intestines are massively inflamed. So it makes sense. You know, he had colitis, he has a bunch of gut issues. I would be curious to see a food log of what he's been eating for the past few months. Even with this condition he has, the colitis, if he was on a properly done carnivore diet, it should be the lowest level of inflammation that any diet would give him. He actually said his C-reactive protein went down. So it was even higher than this before. Maybe he is following the diet to some degree and it has been helping him. If I was him, I would use this as an indicator that the carnivore diet is a step in the right direction and that he should try to refine it a bit further before moving on to something else. The next test is vitamin D3. And when I reached out to him to talk about iodine, the main focus was actually vitamin D3. I said he was likely vitamin D3 deficient uh, because of his energy levels, and lo and behold, he gets his blood tested. His vitamin D3 is abysmally low at 60 nanomoles per liter. Uh, this is supposed to be around 200 for optimal health. He said he was in the sun for a while, but you need to be consuming certain vitamins as well as cholesterol from animal foods to be able to metabolize vitamin D3 properly. You can get all the sun you want, but without the precursor nutrients to absorb the vitamin D3, you're not getting it. I think adding a bit of liver to his diet uh, would go a long way in fixing many of the issues he's having, that in combination with a higher fat percentage. I spoke to him about all of these things in the email, and he was kind enough to actually uh, mention me in his video, uh, calling me a prophet. As someone who's been doing this for a period of time and understands the importance of the amount of sun we need to get, it's pretty obvious that we need to be either supplementing vitamin D3 or getting much more sun than we are now. Literally like two to three hours a day at peak UV. A lot of carnivore dieters will say that you can just consume meat for your vitamin D3 because that's what the First Nation Alaskans did. Uh, but they were eating seal and caribou. And those wild animal foods have hundreds to thousands 
of times the amount of vitamin D3 that the meat we eat now has. I mean, if you want to choke down three pounds of wild caught mackerel or herring, yeah, that's going to have you know, several thousand IU of vitamin D3 compared to red meat that might not have a significant amount because of the quality of the meat. You know, when you're grain feeding an animal, it's not getting the nutrients in its flesh. His cholesterol was 7.45. When the recommended amount is below 5.19, he said that his cholesterol was much lower before he went on the carnivore diet. But his HDL, the good cholesterol, went up drastically, and his LDL went up a little bit. However, none of these markers are really good indicators of anything. They don't tell us much. What we should look at is the cholesterol to HDL ratio. That would ideally be below 2.5, but his ratio is 1.4. He has a great ratio, and he shouldn't be worried about all of these numbers. His doctor actually prescribed a statin a cholesterol lowering medication that impairs a lot of other metabolic processes and this demonstrates the pure ignorance and misunderstanding that is the current medical system. I hope he was joking when he said he was going to take the statin otherwise you're going to see firsthand what happens and what this drug does to someone's cognitive function. His triglycerides were almost cut in half when he went from vegan to carnivore Triglycerides are the amount of fat measured in the blood, and this is lower on a ketogenic or a carnivore diet. This is a way better indicator for disease than any of those cholesterol readings. Having large amounts of inflammation as well as insulin resistance in the body will cause triglycerides to be high, but we see the opposite on meat-based diets. And and just to sum things up, I mean, the general quality of meat that Vegetable Police has been eating is very poor, you know, from high omega-6 pork and chicken, uh, processed meats like bacon, lack of organ meats, as well as quality fat. You know, if he was to focus on wild-caught fish, a much higher food quality, and add a bunch of organ meats in here and there, he would have been much better off. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Our goal being to provide you guys with high quality nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. So if you want Frankie's meat in your mouth, check it out. I've also recently launched Frankie's Naturals with minimally processed, minimal ingredient, hygiene and cosmetic products such as fluoride free tooth powder, Frankie's hair cement, that I have in my hair right now. It is a natural hair pomade. So if you would like to see the full line of our products, go to frankiesnaturals.com. Thanks again, guys, for joining me today and enjoy the rest of your week.